Oh, what's going on, Game Loopers? Are we ready for the 20 best champions of the new 11.9 patch? Time Stance X is back, and let me just say that there are some very, very interesting picks in here because of the buffs the Nurse Riot have in store for us. So if you want an idea, guys, on who to play for the rest of the current patch so you can then hit the ground running on that particular champion in a week's time, do not go anywhere. Now, while you're telling me in the comments which champion you think is going to be the most broken in 11.9, <clears throat> Lulu, make sure to head on over to the Game Loop website for elite learning resources, guides, courses, analyses, daily uploads from Eggs himself. We have it all, guys, so check it out. As always, in the description and comment section. All right, let's get into it. And starting off the countdown is a champion who has been flying under the radar recently, and this is Ivern. And let me say this, if you want a one-trick a champion, guys, and climb, Ivern is easily one of the best champions to do this on. He's rarely ever banned and has so much carry potential, and this is going to be bigger next patch because Moonstone's base heal is increasing, so you're going to be even more impactful in those mid-game skirmishes and fights. And what's also great about Ivern, guys, is that you can also choose the new Shirelia's battle song as your mythic, which now gives you and your ally movement speed, and as we all know, MS is one of the most important stats in this meta. So if you have a Jinx on your team, or a Yasuo, or a Camille, any damage dealer to be honest, you can enhance their power and give them the peel they need to 1v9. Now ahead of the Fern guys, we have a champion I did actually just mention, and this is Jinx. And I'm sorry ADC mains, but she is the only marksman on this list. And don't blame me, blame Riot. Now despite the bug fix that is correcting your rocket splash damage, Jinx is going to be the standout marksman for another patch. Especially with Lulu getting buffed, and more specifically her W, which will give you more attack speed earlier on. So expect to see the Jinx-Lulu combo every game at MSI, guys, I'm calling it right now. But yes, if you don't have a Lulu, you still have that extra rocket range, the attack speed reduction buff, and the HP buff from earlier in the season, and this is why Jinx has the highest ADC win rate across all ELOs. Now, coming in at number 18, guys, I'm going to throw two champions at you because, yeah, they're very similar and build the same items, and these, of course, are the Wind Brothers, Yasuo and Yone. And the reason these two have crept back into the top 20 is because of the Death Dance and Wits End buffs. So with DD, you're getting more armor and AD, which gives you more of a chance of dueling those late-game Kimbles and Fioras and surviving in teamfights, and with Wits End, you're getting more AD, which is one of the most important stats on both wires. More auto damage, more Q damage, more R damage. It's true, you won't be buying these until later in a game, but that's when you're strong, especially in Yone's case. So let's say you want to counter Yasuo and Yone and any AD champion in the game, and let's be honest, who doesn't? Well, it's quite simple, guys. You pick Malphite. Not just because he counters them, but because he's broken and has been for ages. Now, I don't think I need to go into too much detail here because I'm sure you all know how strong Malphite is, but like Nasus, nothing is really changing next patch, which is a good thing. Your Sunfire Age of Spike is very strong indeed, you can cuck most top laners with an early Bramble Vest, and you're never not going to be useful because of that ultimate. Now one champion who has also had a high win rate for the entirety of Season 11 is Nasus, and for 11-9 guys the dog is going to be top tier once again. You see, not much is affecting Susan next patch. Yes, bruises and fighters might be better off with Death Stance and Wits End buffs, but your W still exists, and your synergy with Divine Sunder is all too powerful because of that hybrid damage. Honestly, like as long as your Q cooldown stays at what it currently is, which is what made Nasus broken in the first place, I feel as if Nasus is always going going to be on this list. Now this next champion guys hasn't really featured on our top 10 champions list and this is Lulu, who is benefiting from two direct buffs in 11.9 and one item buff. And the item buff is the Moonstone one we already talked about with Ivern, and the direct buffs are to her W's attack speed, which we have also already talked about, you know it's going to be great for attack speed based AD carries, and her W's cooldown, this is also getting buffed. So whether you're empowering your teammate with attack speed and movement speed, or polymorphing an enemy engager or assassin, you are so much more influential in the early to mid game. Now lots of you out there were puzzled with these buffs and rightly so, but if you want LP guides, it is waiting for you if you pick Lulu. Now, just ahead of Lulu is one of the new junglers, but in 11.9, Morgana is not going to be as broken as she is currently. But the change is good, guys. Trust me, it's not going to break Morg jungle. You're still going to fall clear faster than anyone and win most games, and as you can see, your W's damage to monsters is only down 15%, but it's still in that buff, because this used to be at 150% before Riot buffed it in 11.8. Now, will this change Morg from being one of the most banned champions on the Rift? Probably not, but it does dial down some of that ridiculous power. Now, Speaking of ridiculous power, well it might not be ridiculous power actually, it's more unbeatable power, because as Orn guys, you are just very hard to beat, just like the other tanks on this list. Whether you're playing Orn or Malphite, you have amazing scaling as it is, but you are also a pain to play against in lane. Like how many of you have had to play against a Bramble Vest Orn? It could be straight up the most infuriating experience in the game. When you throw in a Barmy Cinder as well and the recently buffed Sunfire Ages, there's not a whole lot you can do to stop the Mountain Breath from carrying. And just a quick thought as well guys, I'm putting my TSM slippers on it that MSI team comps are going to have Jinx. Lulu and Orn, well, pretty much in every single one. Now, I love talking about champions who are going to be OP for a reason that is different to the norm. And for Katarina, guys, 11.9 is going to be as good as 11.8, and the reason for this is the new Hextech Rocket Belt, which Cat mains are building after their Nash's Toothbrush, and this is carving up play, especially in higher elos. You see, the HP Rocket Belt used to give you, well, HP isn't really on pawn on Cat, so trading some of that for Magic Pen is always worth, and that's what happened last patch, and this will be in the game in a week's time. The on-hit you also have in your ultimate will still be there as well, so that on-hit you get from Nash's gets 
pumped into your death lotus and yeah you're still going to be spinning for the win in 11-9 on cat just make sure to buy rocket belt now we're going to stay in that mid lane for the next two picks guys and coming in at number 11 is an ad assassin who has been one of the strongest champions since his w buffs in 11-4 and this is talon and it's not just those rake buffs that have made talon strong it's the prowler's claw active in lethality which boasts the most in the game it's the serpent's fang buff which made it easier to nuke enemy champions with shields already on them or champions about to get shielded and it's the cerulean's grudge decrease in price which makes it a more viable third or fourth item so this season has been very kind to talon guys and i almost forgot to mention the eeg's trademark the seeker's arm guard nerf which has made mages a heck of a lot easier to kill at level 6 onwards especially those like fears and Cassidy, who can be a bit of a pain after they get some armor under their belt so talon guys still super strong and following talon kicking off the top 10 we have mid rumble who is still going to be destroying everyone in that mid lane in 11 9 despite getting nerfed but yeah this nerf honestly means very little so your autos are dealing less damage when you're cooking but here's the thing you still gain 50 percent attack speed when you're overheating so melee champions are still not going to be able to go anywhere near you so you will continue to have priority in a free early lane and it's one of the most oppressive things to deal with at the moment the old rumble mid and i'm expecting ryan to target him again so get on the junkyard yordle guys before this happens now ahead of rumble we have one of the strongest top laners in the game who is going to be stronger that's right stronger next patch and this is Kled, who is going to benefit from that death stance buff in particular just like yasuo and yone the extra ad and armor gives you more 1v1 power which is what you want in that late game so you can win the split push and we also have to know here guys that sunfire aegis is holding on to its recent buff so your mythic spike is still very good and by hysterics gauge and the new death stance afterwards providing the enemy comp has a decent amount of ad and nothing is going to stop you on clad well actually this next champion might be able to and despite copying three nurse in 11 9 guys diana will remain as a top tier pick and this is simply because you can fall clear nearly as well as anyone and you have some of the best one shot potential in the game so your armor per level is down so later in a game you are more killable you're not going to regen as much health so if you're wandering out of the jungle with some hp missing this might matter and you're losing some early game attack speed in your passive but there's one word to describe these nerfs minimal it's not going to have an impact if any as i said guys you will still be able to clear camps very fast and nuke any enemy champion that gets close to you you might not boast the highest win rate in the game as you do now but it will still be one of the highest so who can be stronger than diana next patch well i've got seven champions here and the first is ergot who most of you are probably having nightmares about because of how good he is and guess what next patch guys with the new death stance expect to have a few more sleepless nights now on top of the dd buff just like how katarina can use the on hit from nashes as ergot you can still use the on hit from titanic hydra via your w and yeah you are going to continue to purge your enemies in 11 9 and this will in fact be easier to accomplish against bruisers like darius and set because they built dead man's plate and dead man's is getting nerfed so 100 hp is now gone from the item meaning these champions are easier to kill as ergot you land one q and it is over i mean that's what it feels like right now to play against or as the got this will be even more true the next patch now beating Urgot to the number 6 spot guys is another rocket build abuser who I don't really think has been talked about enough this season as being broken and this is Fiddlesticks. Like every time I check the top win rates this collection of wood is always near the top and with the rocket belt buff I've got to put him in here for another patch. You see the magic pen guys from the belt combined with the pen from sorcery shoes is a deadly combination and pretty much spells death for anyone you land your ultimate on. In addition the fact that Zonya's is as cheap as it is means you have all the damage and survivability you need at just 2 items and pretty early into a game compared to most champions so 11-9 Fiddle is keeping a spot among LOL's elite. Now I know 5 champions guys who are going to be stronger than Fiddle next patch and as we get into the 11-9 top 5, if you want to perfect, if you want to master any of the champions we've been through, then there's one destination, GameLeap.com. You see from a coach who has helped countless students climb to division and tier climbs guys and get to rank 1 EUS by the way, I know what works. Our guides, our courses, our analyses, these are all you need to peek on the rift, so it's time to engage, links down below. So starting off the top 5, we have a mid laner similar to Talon, with Prowler's Claw and Serpent's Fang and some season 11 buffs, Kiana is once again the cream of the crop for AD assassins. The 11-5 buffs that enhance your W and your R's damage have seen the best Kianas in the world boast some crazy win rates and high reloads. And that's the thing guys, if you can put in the work and practice to master the elemental Empress, you have more carry potential than anyone to be honest. Like if I'm playing against an expert Kiana player, I want to FF. It's that simple. And yeah, just like Talon, the buffs of your major items have been another boost this season. Whether it's Serpent's Fang, the Grudge, even Muramana's shock damage. So 11-9 Kiana in the top 5 for another patch. Now coming in at number 4 guys is a top laner, a jungler, a mid laner, a nocturne and the reason knock is suddenly in the top 5 guys instead of just in the top 20 is because he can make use of the death stance and wits and buffs as well as any champion. The new bruiser build and playstyle has seen the paranoia for multiple patches now have one of the highest win rates across all elos and this is only going to improve with these item buffs. The wits end buff in particular is key because attack speed on nocturne is crucial because building attack speed and wits end lets you get more passes off. So stride breaker, sterisk gauge, death stance, wits end, GA, you cannot go wrong with these items on 11-9 knock. Now for the top 
three of 11.9, guys. And at number three is Wukong, who has been a top three champion since the Trinity Force update from 11.7. And as I mentioned, with a few champions already, the improved death stance and wits end give you another way of building and beating your enemies to death. With Darius weaker because of Dead Man's Plate and with Garen weaker because of the direct nerf and Dead Man's nerf, Wukong can crush both of these juggernauts with even more ease. And that's the thing, it is extremely hard to beat a Wukong in lane and game. The innate tankiness in his passive, the trickiness with his W, two ultimates, combine this with the more rounded Trinity Force and buff death stance, and it is GG. Now, the runner up to the 11 9 Mass Broken Champion, guys, is like Wukong, in the sense that he also shares a very high win rate in all Elos, and this is Vladimir, who right buff beyond belief in 11 8. Now, in 11 9, yeah, Vlad is getting nerfed, so your Q's cooldown is a little higher at later ranks, but compared to what it was before last patch, it's still an overall buff, and seeing as Vlad was in a good position already, this will still keep him in that Giga Broken category. You couple this with the new Rocket Belt Magic Pen, and you have one of the best mythic power spikes in the game, and the death cap buff from 11.6 also helps you out too. An earlier two item spike, and enough AP and magic pen to bring down the whole of Runeterra. Now who can be better than 11.9 Vlad guys? Well this fighter, like Wukong, has shot up in win rate and op penis. there's our word again, since the Trinity Force buffs and is the best abuser of the TF. The extra AD, the spellblade damage, the haste, the movement speed, it is all too much on Camille. The fact that Trinity Force's threefold strike passive procs on towers as well makes you one of the best split pushers in the game, and no one can kill you quick enough before you one shot the enemy team's backline. And you will be even harder to take down now, guys, if you decide to build the buff staff stance, so Camille takes the top spot for another week. And any comments on the list, guys, or 11.9 changes, let me hear it in the comments. And before you go, make sure to hit that sub button and the bell. And until tomorrow's video, this has been Koji. Peace.